with this many red cherries already being picked off the tree and there's still being this many unripened beans. <clears throat> there was quite a bit of beans on this tree. Uh, the first year in general, well the first year always, you can't pick any beans. It's not until the second year that you can start taking coffee. Usually you're looking at around 40 to 60 percent, but this tree uh, did fairly well for itself. Um, so it's looking at closer to 70 percent. Um, and if you can imagine, if the ripened beans were still on the tree, uh, there would be ripe and unripened beans at the same time. Uh, the coffee tree starts uh, blossoming in February, March, and April. Um, the flower only blossoms for three days. It falls off fairly quickly. Um, but it blossoms on the same tree a couple different times. That's why you see the difference in the ripeness of the beans. Uh, and again, that's the reasoning for um, having the picking season go from July all the way through December, January. Um, if we take a look at this tree down here, this tree is probably on its fifth year of growth, so after it's done this year, we will probably cut it down. Uh, but you can see that in the center of the tree, you don't get any beans. It's only on the very outside and the top of the tree. And as you can see, the top of the tree has gotten very heavy, so it's starting to fall over already. Um, so there's a couple big issues that we have as far as um, bugs that we have to deal with uh, for coffee. Um, we have wild turkeys, wild chickens, wild boar, um, there's pheasants here as well, but none of them cause any issues with the coffee. Uh, no one really, the outside of the coffee bean is actually uh, sweet, so you may think that some people, uh, some animals would be interested in it, but they uh, tend to leave it alone. The seeds don't, aren't that tasty for them, I guess. Um, but the biggest issue we have is um, bugs. One of them is um, ants. They'll lay eggs on the bottom sides of the, the leaves and that'll cause damage for the leaves, uh, ultimately making it more difficult to grow coffee beans. The other one is what's called a coffee boring beetle. It showed up on the island three years ago. Um, we're not really sure where it came from. It's not a new bug to coffee by any means, uh, but it is new to the island. That year when it first showed up, they lost around 60, per seven, 60 to 70 percent of all of the Kona coffee crop uh, just because they weren't prepared for it. In this area, I, we do the tours every day, so we're touching the trees a lot. Um, so there is about 60 to 70 percent infestation in this area, but if we take a look at the whole farm, it's closer to 15 percent. Um, so it's still our biggest issue, uh, but we're starting to take care of it. The biggest issue is that a lot of the people in this area just have coffee trees in their front yards. They've been growing coffee on the island for over 100 years, and some people just have it in their yards. Um, they're used to taking care of the ants, which is fairly easy. You could just uh, use vinegar to take care of that. Um, but uh, for these new coffee boring beetles, you have to try a little bit harder, and it becomes more and more difficult. Um, and if you say to yourself, I don't want to deal with coffee this year, and just let it grow, uh, the bugs will definitely come. And if you have coffee next door, they'll go next door. Contamination. Because, yeah, it will cause problems for everybody. Um, so right now, everybody's there's a large group of people that want Hawaii to step in and take care of things. And then there's the other side of the argument as well. <laughs> people who want to take care of it themselves or organically, you know. Uh, so there's push from both directions. But if we take a look at this bean, for example, this is unripe. So as you can see, um, it's still very really stiff. When they ripen up, they uh, get a little bit more soft. But right here on the top, that's where the flower blossomed. After it falls off, then you start getting the bean to grow. If we take a look... You can see on both of these... So this hole right in the center, that's an actual hole into the inside of the bean. And this one as well has a hole right in the center and also one to the the side there as well. But the beetle opens up a hole right there in the top and then goes straight for the bean. So if we open up this one we might be able to see what the damage looks like. So, yep, that's what it looks like when the bug gets to the coffee. Uh, so he's got that hole right there in the top and this is the actual bug. Um, very small, can fly, doesn't bite humans or anything, it's just going for the coffee. Uh, but this is its damage. Um, you can see these two beans came out of the one cherry. 
um, but only one of the two beans is, has any damage. Uh, so we could use the other bean. Uh, when they're doing the pick, they're not paying attention if there's damage to the bean or not. They're picking all of the cherries that are completely ripe. Um, then we deal with this a little bit later. So the day that we pick the cherries, the next step is to put it into what's called a pulper. It's essentially a barrel with bumps on the outside and it squishes the cherry so you get the skin off and then the beans go the other way. And right now there's still a lot of sugars on the outside of the coffee bean here. Um, just with those sugars we add the beans to water. Um, we let it sit for 15-17 hours and with that you'll actually let the beans ferment, get rid of a lot of the sugars on the outside of the bean. Uh, we give them a nice clean and then we're drying the beans as is like this uh, for about two weeks. This part that you see here you might think is the green bean. Um, this is actually what's called the parchment coat. Uh, so after that two weeks of drying we can actually finally break this open and get to the green bean. But at that point there's still about 40% water still inside of the coffee bean. Uh, if you try to roast coffee with that much water, water in it, it'll extend the amount of time that the roast takes. Uh, so we dry the green beans by themselves for about two months. Uh, get the amount of water down to about 10%. Um, so from the pick to the actual roasting process, it's about three months. And if you're wondering when we take care of the bugs, uh, when we add the beans to the water, if the bugs have been infested with the beetles, there'll be holes, therefore air will be able to get in. And when you put it into the water, those will float to the top. So most of the, the bug damage we get out uh, during the fermentation process. We clear off that top layer, throw those all the way. But also after the parchment coat has come off, the beans get separated at that point into the different coffee grades. And so they'll also take care of things there as well. Um, so let's head back into the store. There's a couple more pictures I can uh, walk you through. This is what it looks like when we're drying the beans. Um, you can kind of see right now, if you look higher up the mountain, that around later in the afternoon, especially around 5 or 6 o'clock, we're usually getting a little bit of rain. Uh, the clouds will come down from the mountains and we get the rain. But in the morning, we generally have blue skies. Um, so we're drying these beans outside. Uh, we also do them on top of the roof as well. Uh, but we have uh, roofs that we can actually pull over and cover up since we're getting that much rain. If you live in a drier area, you can actually skip the fermentation process and let them uh, dry right outside. Um, but if we did that here, it would take considerably longer than two weeks, so we, we skip that step. And this is what it looks like when they're doing the picking. This bucket's around 25 pounds, and again, one pound of picked cherries is only worth 55 cents. And they're, because they're not getting paid by the hour, they're getting paid by weight. Good legs, right? <laughs> And if they're really quick, they're looking at around 400 pounds in a day. And that's starting around 7, finishing around 3 or 4. Um, so it's a pretty pretty tough job, uh, but uh, they do a really good job of it. Is, is there any... Uh, <clears throat> so everything gets picked, like, uh, is there like a certain amount that fall? You Some know, will uh, fall, fall if they... How much of a loss do you generally look at, like a 20% loss of... A sprouted flower? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what kind of numbers we're looking at for loss specifically, but if the beans go, if they do over ripen, then they'll will start to fall off. But we're always trying to, they're always trying to pay attention to the trees to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, but I'll set these on any luggage or any bags that you want to put, feel free to leave them underneath the chair or the table there. This center crease that you can see here, that'll pop open, it'll actually pop like popcorn, you'll hear it popping like popcorn, and then when you look at the bean, it'll actually start to, to grow right away. It smells slightly of coffee. Yeah, right now if you smell the coffee, it smells less like coffee, roasted coffee beans and more like a sweet bread or something along those lines. That's because it's roasting out a lot of the earthy stuff and the sugars out of the coffee, so that's where you can next time from. So again, 10 minutes from green bean to light roast. Once you get the light, you get your first crack. Once that sound of popcorn goes away, you'll be around cinnamon or medium. 
After another minute passes, you'll go from medium to high and start to go into city. Once you reach city, you'll have a lot of white smoke coming out of the front of the roaster. The first crack, you roast out water and sugars. The second crack, you're roasting out the oils from inside the coffee bean, or the coffee seed, actually. Uh, so once you reach city, you start to get a lot of white smoke. Once you get in between the two, you'll start seeing uh, oils on the outside of the coffee bean. And once you go all the way over to full city, you'll get a lot of oil. Once full city, once you pass full city, the sound will, uh, the second crack sound will go away, and you'll be in the French area. And then 10, 15 seconds later, you'll be out of Brown Battalion. The Indians to light, 10 minutes. Light to city, 4 minutes. City to Italian, a minute and a half. So the process speeds up as we go. Um, the hot coffee that you drink for samples, I hope that you guys, did you get the sample of coffee yet? Okay, just try to get a break in for that. Uh, the hot coffee that we sell is in between city to full city. That's my recommendation for you if you're gonna drink hot coffee. Um, Corona coffee juice does a little bit better a little bit darker than a normal medium roast, which would be somewhere in between medium or high. Uh, so we recommend city to full city. We also have an iced coffee out there. The iced coffee has been between French and Italian. You can of course do hot coffee with that dark roast as well, as whatever you like. And you can of course choose whichever roast you'd like. This is all up to you guys today. Uh, so please let me know what you're thinking about roasting and we'll help you uh, get whatever roast you'd like today. So center line is, you can see it's starting to puff up. It's actually cracking open like popcorn. And it's it kind of smell like popcorn. So, so that's where the pop center of the beans cracking open. Yeah, look good. This one was a little hot, and again, these roasters being as old as they are, each one's flame is a little bit different. It's and done by feel. Yeah, so I want to be a little bit faster, but don't worry, I, I turned it down a little bit, so. Um, you said pie. pie. So, and then you guys, what are you looking for for a roast? Uh, uh, pie. As for the, uh, the food city, as the city. Okay, so for the two that are doing pie, we're going to have the sound from the first crack. Once the sound's gone away, we're going to be leaving cinnamon, going into medium. It's going to be about a minute from medium to high into city. So you're going to want to stop it somewhere in there. My best suggestion, uh, once you start seeing white smoke, check the coffee. If you like the color, go ahead and pull, and you can get the coffee out. Um, for the city, full city, you want there to be a little bit of oil on the outside of the coffee bean. So once you start having the cracking from the second crack, keep checking the coffee. Look for the coffee beans that look like they're almost sweating. It has a little bit of oil on the outside of the coffee bean. And then for French, once the sound's gone away, you'll be into the French area. Take a look at the color and then pull it out. Once you actually pour out the coffee, the roast will continue just because the coffee beans are so hot. Um, so um, that's why we have the fans here. We try to cool it down as fast as possible. Stop the um, cooking. But to get it in between, once you start seeing the oils, then you know, that's when we want to dump it out. Then you'll get about 50% of the beans with oil coming out. It's like so. cooking bread. Doesn't all the way cook, but the rest process does it. Right. And then when we dump out the coffee, once you have the coffee that you like, if you're right-handed, you would suggest the glove on your left hand. You have to give it a little bit of a pull to stop it from spinning. But then you just pull all the way forward, dump all the coffee out, make sure to put it back. And then you take this whole bucket, make sure you have the spoon with you, bring the bucket over to the fans, and start cooling it off. And Back. And then 
on top of the fans there for you before you hear that crack. That's pretty well good enough. Yep, we're cool.